What's up everyone, this is Share talking, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about farming on episode 12 of the second part of the story mode. Here we have good status camps for instant kill farming with Albert. We start with this, uh, stage 12.1.3 will allow you to farm easily. And because now we have some items to increase the status gain, if you want to do this, you can just increase it by going here if you have the Valder's training secrets. But nonetheless, the stage here just requires Albert, don't need any other... Uh, increase with Volcano, Yundin, or anything. I have 231 Intelligence, my base is 138, that's not even the max cap now. Uh, this is my equipment and he can just bring four trainees here. So I chose to go with the Rainbow Rangers formation, but you can still use any string if you want. And this is the only stage on this chapter that you can instant kill all targets. At least the best one. The Crawler looks like a zombie, but no. You can't instant kill. They have very low will. It's a given. The status cap here are pretty nice, 16 and 50s. So, good moment for those that want to bring some trainees. Now we'll go straight to stage 12.2.5 because this one is a boss stage and has the highest caps. That being 16, 70s. Well, uh, the enemies here are weak to sun mostly, but also sometimes to heat and blunt. The boss itself is only weak to blunt, so you can go with sun and heat against the normal enemies and then just go for blunt against the boss. So, uh, the first strategy that I use focus on trying to buff my Christmas Rupina so that she can kill the first wave. The only way to do that is by bringing Leon, This Leon here will just easily clear the second wave with his Imperial Glory. You can inherit double cut if you want. Uh, with Rupina we will need an inheritance. She goes for Holy Shining's Word on wave 1 and then cross break on the boss. And I bring Lyas because she's one of the best blunt nukers. She just has Bibo Crumble on 14, so she's just gonna use Sky Twister. You can bring two trainees and the formation is Amazon Raid X. So, this works because Leon buffs Urpina by 20%. 10% for everyone in the party and extra 5 for Slash, extra 5 for Sun. You don't need combos, you only need 60,000 HP damage. Now on the second one, Leon is just gonna finish. He does enough damage too. I'm <laughs> just getting combos here. If you wanna, you can also bring Urpina to the front line because this boss has very high agility and being on the front line means that she won't get hit. She really needs to be on full HP for max damage. Let's see what will happen. Sky Twister. Cross break. It gets almost full HP, but you will need a little extra help from your trainees. Those are mine are pretty bad. The next strategy uses Rainbow Ranger's formation, and we have here two fast attackers, Bertrand with Abaddon Hands inherited, and Matriarch with Gleaming Way inherited, and she's gonna use Light Strength Lunge against the boss later. I'm using this one because this one buffs 5% for everyone damage. Then there's Rufus on the next position, he's gonna finish the boss easily. We can bring two trainees here as well, so so this strategy works well because Mantrak here is just helping Bertrand finish the enemies. Bertrand gets BP back when he kills enemies so that he can use Abaddon Hands at the first wave. Then he's gonna use Abaddon Hands again on the second wave with help of Mantrak again. And then against the boss he's gonna use a strong single target attack with 8 BP since he, it's all that he has left. And Rufus will just finish the boss with Gun and Blade. This boss has very high agility, I'm using a full HP stone, but if you have some inconsistence, just bring a gun plus stone instead. This one will not need help from trainees because it just finishes the boss. The third strategy is pretty fun, we just bring Leon again, but it doesn't really need to be Leon, it can also be... Uh, Mantrak, but you have some difficulty choosing uh, the turn order. So, 
Rook is on the front line. I'm gonna use him for a hammer roll. Increase Nutcracker to 14. Uh, with your summary Elizabeth, you should just go dual hammer for 12. The good thing about it, Elizabeth is that she will just attack on turn 1 and turn 3. So she helps with the boss as well. And Lee will kill the second wave just fine so that Rook will skip a turn so that he uses a hammer roll again against the boss. You can bring two trainees here as well. So hammer roll will go first because we placed Rook on the front. And by attacking twice it means that his hammer roll in the last wave will be even stronger. Because Leo has delay, he will not interfere with Summer Elizabeth as well. She finishes one enemy that didn't get stomped. Now Imperial Glory will finish the enemies. Leon is still a very important figure for farming. Fixes many strategies. Now against the Dragon, Hammer Roll will probably just kill it. It's just overkill. I don't know if we need Elizabeth, but we'll see. Elizabeth also buffs uh, Blunt Damage. Yeah, we'll need just a little. <laughs> we didn't need Elizabeth. So you know that you can replace her with some other characters just fine. Okay, so that's it guys. These are my runs for this chapter. Uh, if you want to farm story mode, you can just go for pickaxes. They are dropping out if you are missing out. And S version of Pokalin Wood. That is not really useful. Not now at least. And it's just for collection. And with that, I'll finish the video. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, there are links in the description. Don't forget to join our Discord server where we discuss saga games and other JRPGs. I hope to see you soon in the next video. Bye.